What's up my comic comrades? Today we break down the history of one of comics most loved and popular supervillains, Two-Face. The character has been around since the 1940s and is easily one of the top 10 Batman villains. He's made countless appearances both in and outside of comics over the years, including two live action portrayals on the big screen. And it's all earned because he's a dope villain and a fan favorite. But first we want to thank NordVPN for sponsoring today's episode. With so much of our lives being online now, it just keeps getting more important to take control of our internet security. As for us here at Variant, we give the unwanted prying eyes the five knuckle how's your uncle by using the best VPN out there, NordVPN. VPN. And right now you can keep your internet data secure with two years of next generation encryption at a huge discount along with a bonus four months for free by going to nordvpn.com forward slash variant or by clicking our link in the description. On top of state of the art encryption, Nord has a strict no logs policy because they believe that your personal information and data is for your eyes only, which means they don't track, collect, or share your private data, which is a concept we need to see more of. Anyway, it's stupid simple to start protecting your digital self with NordVPN. You just create your account, download Nord across your devices, and turn it on. And once you do, Nord immediately begins to hide your IP address whenever you're online by redirecting your connection through one of their 5,100 plus remote servers in 60 countries worldwide. You could also switch between servers in seconds, which gives you the ability to enjoy the internet without limits or borders, including access to hundreds of streaming platforms and their unique content from around the globe. But Nord also gives you access to a ton of other great features too, like P2P large file sharing, dedicated IP availability, 24 seven customer support, and a bunch more. And with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee, you could see how great Nord is for yourself risk free. So again, head over to nordvpn.com forward slash variant or click our link in the description now. And Nord will hook you up with a huge discount on a two year plan, as well as an additional four months for free, but only when you go to nordvpn.com forward slash variant or use our link below. So take control of your internet life with NordVPN. You can thank us later. But now let's dive into the comic book history of Two Face. <laughs> Face first appeared in Detective Comics issue 66 in August of 1942. He was created by Bill Finger and Bob Kane. Something that mainstream media doesn't know is that Two-Face's real name, Harvey Dent, was originally Harvey Kent. But they soon changed the last name to Dent as they realized Kent was the same last name as Superman's alter ego, Clark Kent, and didn't want the confusion. Another little fun fact is that Finger and Kane took inspiration from Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So much so that on the first page of his first appearance, Bob Kane drew him reading a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde novel with dialogue from Finger saying, Meet the most bizarre criminal of all time, a 20th century Jekyll Hyde in the crimes of Two-Face. But with those little insights to his real world creation, let's take a look at his comic book origin. Since Two-Face has been around since 1942, as you can imagine, he has had plenty of different retellings of his origin throughout the decades. But let's start off with his first one given to him by legendary creators Bill Finger and Bob Kane. We are given his first origin in Detective Comics issue 66 in 1942, which as you remember is also his first appearance. On the first page, we are given a picture of Two-Face sitting in what seems to be a haunted house, reading a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde book. While a panel on the bottom right reads, Gotham City, and up its courthouse steps walks a handsome Harvey Kent, district attorney with his fiance. Remember, Remember, he was originally called Harvey Kent before they later changed it to Harvey Dent. Anyway, in the panel, we see Harvey and his fiance walking up the stairs while a reporter says, here comes Harvey Kent now. Pose that famous profile, DA. Well, Harvey says, cut it, boys, I'm blushing. On the next page, we are brought inside the courthouse where Harvey Kent is starting his case of the state versus boss, Maroney. Harvey says, your honor, I call the state's first witness, the Batman. Batman then says, we had a fight and Maroney got away, but he is the man who shot Bucky Benson. Maroney then replies, he's lying, but Harvey picks up a coin saying, here's the proof found at the scene of the crime. Maroney's lucky piece, a two headed silver dollar with his fingerprints all on it. At which point Maroney gets pissed off and lunges towards Harvey and throws acid on his face as Batman says, look out DA, he's throwing acid. But Batman wasn't fast enough and some acid was still able to hit the side of Harvey's face. The next panel then takes us to the hospital where Batman asks the doctor who's wrapping up Harvey's face, it was vitriol, wasn't it doctor? The doctor replies, yes a concentrated solution too. Luckily for Kent, your hand deflected it, so it only struck one side of his face. While Harvey's fiance says, my poor darling. The comic then takes us to one month later, where the doctor tells Harvey, it's time to take the bandages off. Harvey then says, hand me a mirror, Batman. Gosh, I'm worried stiff. Wonder what my face will look like. Captions in the comic then tell us, with the bandages removed, Kent sees his face for the first time, and with horror-stricken eyes. As Harvey says, my face, the acid has left one side of my face, scarred and hideous. Batman then tells Harvey, don't worry, I know one man who could perform miracle plastic surgery, Dr. Eckhart, the European specialist. But when Batman goes to take Harvey to Dr. Eckhart, he finds out that the doctor is being held in prison somewhere. With his face seriously scarred and no way of fixing it, Harvey starts to go insane looking in the mirror saying, who am I? What am I? I am not a man. I am half a man. Beauty and beast, good and evil. I am a living Jekyll and Hyde. He then picks up Maroney's coin, which he presented in court, which caused Maroney to throw acid on him, telling the coin, you caused all my trouble. Maroney's lucky two-headed silver dollar. Two heads, two faces, clean and shiny. At which point Harvey picks up a scalpel and starts slashing one side of the coin saying, two sides, clean, handsome, like mine once were. Now one is scarred 
ugly like mine. It's at this moment he decides the coin will decide the fate of all his decisions from now on. If it lands on the clean side, he'll do something good. If it lands on the scarred side, he'll do something bad. For example, one day he flipped the coin and it landed on the scarred side, so Two-Face hired thugs to rob a bank. Then later on that night, he flipped the coin again and it landed on the clean side, so Two-Face stole a rival gangster's money and gave it to a charity home. And this is more or less how Two-Face would be portrayed for the early years, often coming into confrontation with the Cape Crusader. But since then, Two-Face has been given several updated origins, the two most notable ones taking place in Batman Annual 14 and Batman The Long Halloween. Both of them are pretty similar. They both depict Harvey Dent as having a rough childhood, as his father was an alcoholic and mentally ill, which led to him physically abusing Harvey regularly. We also learn that Harvey's obsession with flipping coins came from his father, as we find out Harvey's dad would often flip a coin to determine whether or not he was going to beat his son, which is extremely psychotic. Needless to say, this sort of abuse mentally scarred Dent and left him with a lifelong struggle of free will, leading to him not being able to make choices on his own, and having to use a coin flip to make the decisions for him. Eventually, Dent would be diagnosed with dissociative identity disorder. But because he was such a hard worker, he was able to hide his illness from everyone around him, and eventually became Gotham City's district attorney at the age of 26, becoming their youngest DA in Gotham City history. There was even a brief period where Commissioner Gordon suspected that Harvey may be Batman, but later was like, nah, he doesn't have enough money to fund all those toys that Batman always uses. Anyway, being the best DA in Gotham's history, he would form a good relationship with Jim Gordon and Batman, and the three of them would plan to get rid of organized crime in Gotham City. Long story short, while trying to convict Maroney for murder in court, Maroney throws acid on Dent's face during a cross-examination, horribly disfiguring the left side of his face. This incident pushed all the suppressed emotions Harvey had over the years over the top, which split his personality into two, a good side and an evil side. Furthermore, his mind would only allow him to make choices now by the flip of a coin. Soon after he left the hospital, he turned to a life of crime with only remnants of the old Harvey Dent left. It's a great origin, and Bruce being Harvey's friend just adds to the complexity of their relationship, as Bruce's friend becomes one of his greatest villains. So Bruce is always trying not to necessarily defeat him, but just find his old friend and bring him back as he knows he's in there somewhere. But enough about his origin, now it's time for story arcs. Let's talk about a few of the best Two-Face story arcs ever. First and foremost, we have the Eye of the Beholder, which takes place in Batman Annual 14. We actually just went over it in the origin segment, as this is the definitive modern origin for Two-Face. Even The Long Halloween took inspiration from this series, which is why the origin given in this and The Long Halloween are almost identical. Clearly they're not, but for the most part, they share all the major components. The story is just brilliantly told by Andrew Heffler, as it literally deconstructs Harvey Dent, the greatest district attorney that Gotham has ever had. I mean, the guy literally worked with Jim Gordon and Batman to take down crime. The comic shows us how someone of that caliber, Gotham's White Knight, like that Nolan Batman reference, can turn into a psychopath becoming one of Batman's greatest enemies. Again, it's just brilliant and we even learn about his childhood and all the suppressed emotions he was carrying that people didn't know about. This leads us to another fantastic Two-Face story and one of the greatest Batman stories of all time, The Long Halloween, which recently just got a two-part animated movie. The comic story also serves as inspiration for Nolan's Two-Face, portrayed by Aaron Eckhart in The Dark Knight. If you haven't read the comic series or watched the two-part animated movie, get on that. The story follows a bunch of murders that are happening within crime families by the mysterious holiday killer. And just like in Batman Annual 14, the Eye of the Beholder storyline, Gordon Dent and Batman work together, this time to try to stop the holiday killer before he commits his next murder. And they need to stop it quickly because the holiday killer's murders are only making the blood feud between the two biggest crime families in Gotham, the Falcones and Maronis, that much worse. As far as Dent and the story goes, essentially we see him crack under the tremendous stress and pressure he faces while trying to solve this particular case, which ultimately leads to him breaking completely once Maroni throws acid on Dent's face at which point you all know what happens after that. The writing does a great job of making you feel the pain and sorrow of his disfigurement, which ultimately leads to his horrible turn. Another great Two-Face storyline is Face the Face, which took place in Batman issues 651 through 654 and Detective Comics 817 through 820. The story follows a reformed Harvey Dent after his face was repaired by Hush. Because the old Harvey was back, Batman was like, hey, I'm gonna leave Gotham City in your care for a year while I go off and do other things. And you know what? It worked until Batman returned to Gotham. And not long after Batman and Tim Drake Robin returned to patrolling Gotham City, a good amount of D-list villains started turning up dead. The Dark Knight would soon find out that there was a common link between all these murders, and that was in fact, they were all being killed by Two-Face's gun. But not only that, they also found his fingerprints and witnesses who spotted him at the crime scene, so that's kind of incriminating. Batman later finds out that Harvey was using supervillains to act as his personal spies in the Gotham underworld, at which point he would use intel to take down the big players like the Penguin. In the end, the pressure and stress of Dent taking over Batman's responsibilities for a year caused him to have a mental breakdown and lose control 
over Two-Face, which led to Two-Face resurfacing and becoming Two-Face once more. Next, you have Batman Dark Victory, which is essentially a sequel to The Long Halloween. In this story, we see that quite a bit of time has passed since Harvey turned into Two-Face, and things in Gotham are changing, specifically the legal system. Obviously, you would think things are changing for the worse, but they're actually getting a little bit better, with the help of Gordon and the GCPD working alongside the Batman. As for Two-Face, it's really cool as we get to see him becoming more involved with the supervillain type in Gotham City. Essentially, the story is a nice slow burn and look into the transformation of Dent from DA to A-list supervillain in Gotham. Then there's other great Two-Face stories like Two-Face 2, The Big Burner Ablaze, Nightwing The Great Leap, and Half-Life from Gotham Central. There is no shortage of good Two-Face stories, but now let's move on to powers and abilities. Now this is going to be relatively straightforward because Two-Face has no superpowers, yet he's still one of Batman's greatest and most dangerous villains. And that's because Two-Face is a criminal mastermind. As an expert in law having extensive knowledge in criminal justice, Two-Face knows how villains and people think. So he often uses this to his advantage to come up with cunning plans to achieve his goals. But besides that, he's a former district attorney who worked with the commissioner of police and Batman, meaning he's one of Gotham's greatest detectives and has even outsmarted Batman from time to time. Besides that, Two-Face is a trained fighter and was trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat by Batman in the events of DC's 52. Case and point, he was once able to defeat Killer Croc, which is insane because Killer Croc is super powered. He's also a great marksman because he received training from Deathstroke. Overall, he's one of Gotham's most respected and feared supervillains. Widely considered the number one mobster type Batman villain, which says a lot because there's no shortage of them. But now let's move on to reading recommendations. Check out Detective Comics issue 66, Batman Annual 14, Nightwing The Great Leap and Nightwing issues 147 through 153, Batman The Long Halloween, Batman Dark Victory, and Faces from Batman Legends of the Dark Knight, issue 28. That should be enough to get you all started. And that's going to bring today's episode of Variant to a close, but if you like today's video, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. It always helps the channel out. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.